Yo, today we're gonna look at the intermezzo move, intermediate move, E5. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Obviously, we're in the Italian opening, uh, in the bishop c5 line. Here you play c3, they play knight f6, you go d4, they take. And now, in the previous video, we looked at c takes d4. This time, we're gonna look at e5. Um, obviously, the point of this move is you're attacking the knight. They can go if they want to lose, they can get three pawns for the piece. So for example, this position, they have three pawns for the piece, but this is obviously losing. You're just gonna castle, uh, rook e1, knight c3, the idea knight d5 to put the pressure on the pawns. This is just losing. Um, so that's why uh, we're gonna look at the most sensible options there are four moves uh, the best one is d5 so counter attacking the bishop but let's first start with the other three which are knight g4 so moving the knight away uh, there is also knight e4 and there is queen e7 pinning the pawn um, let's start with knight to g4 uh, so knight g4, they move the knight away, here you just take the pawn, so c takes d4, they're most likely gonna give a check, 85% of them do so, uh, so they give a check, you go knight c3 blocking the check, now they're gonna strike with d5, and almost always in positions like this, when they strike with d5, you do not take Obviously, here you have the option to take en passant, uh, but uh, more often you're going to move the bishop to pin the knight, and this is the best move. So you, you pin the knight, uh, they go castles, you go castle, and then they play, there are a lot of options, but basically the, the downside of the black position is this knight, because it's misplaced, and you're going to play h3, uh, knight is gonna have to move back and then you're gonna take So for example uh, Most popular move is a6 you take this knight so you even damage this pawn structure uh, Now you go h3 knight has to go back You take the knight they take back and now you play something like um, rook c1 for example putting pressure on the pawn and the point of this position, the, the advantage is that you're gonna go something like queen d2, attack this pawn, also you have ideas of placing the knight on uh, c5, so something like kicking out the bishop, and then place, so you play uh, a3 and b4, and then plant this knight in the middle, and obviously this position is better for white. Um, now let's go back. So this was knight to knight to g4. Um, now let's look at the the most tricky move, which is queen e7. Here you're gonna have to memorize the theory perfectly, like move by move, because otherwise you can lose. Um, so let's look at this line. You're gonna go castles. The point is the the pawn is now no longer pinned, so this is a threat. Um, some players go knight g4 here, because they do not want to take, so they go knight g4. In this case, you can just play bishop g5, this position is like plus 5 for white. Um, most likely they're gonna go something like f6, you take, they're gonna take back, again attacking your bishop, but now you have a lot of options. Rook e1, the best move I think is cd to, to attack the bishop. Uh, for example, if they take, you have rook e1 just spinning the, the queen, and obviously this is losing for, for black. Um, so knight g4 is definitely not scary. Uh, the problem is this move. Here you have to, you have to know the theory. You take the knight, logical. 
queen takes, you pin the queen logical, they block, and now you go queen e2, so the point is you're attacking the knight, and now they have two options. They can go d5 or they can go uh, f5. Obviously they cannot take uh, move the knight because you're gonna take the queen. Um, so let's first look at d5. Here you have to know c takes d4. And the point is, for example, uh, I don't know, if you take here, they, they are gonna take, you take, they take, you take, they block, for example, you take. Uh, now here, they can just castle because pin, you, you cannot take because uh, back rank and material is equal, this position is just equal. Um, so that's why you have to play this move. And the reason is also now they have to respond to it because you're attacking the queen and the bishop. Let's say they take with the bishop. Here, you're, now you, you take. And the reason is the difference between the bishop being on c5 and the bishop being on d4 is that on d4 there is going to be a fork. Because on c5 when you had the rook on e4 this wasn't a fork because the bishop is on c5. So you want to attract the bishop to d4. That's why this move. So you attract the bishop, now you can take, now queen takes, take, 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 and you can see the bishop is lost. If block, obviously take. Um, now what if queen takes, they are attacking this pawn, so you play bishop e3, uh, skewering. If they take here, uh, you take the queen, they're obviously gonna take your queen back, and now you just take the bishop and the knight is pinned. If they try to preserve the knight, f3 and you're gonna be winning. Um, but there is a trickier move, which is f5. So we looked at d4, after which you take f5, again, the same, the same move, you take cd. Uh, bishop takes. Now you have to know knight to d2. The point is you're just attacking the knight and the threat is again this fork in the end. Um, now they play d5, attacking your bishop, solidifying the knight. Now again you have to play knight f3, attacking the queen, attacking the bishop. Um, they're probably gonna play something like bishop takes f2. Uh, desperado sacrifice, they're gonna lose the bishop anyway, so they at least want to get a pawn. You can take with the queen, because obviously knight takes, you have a check. Um, let's say they move the queen back, something like queen d6. Now it looks like you don't have anything, but you play knight g5, and the point is you're just so much more developed. For example, they take your bishop, you take the knight, they take, you take. And look at the king, the king is just naked in the middle of the board. You're gonna play moves like bishop g5, double up the rooks and you're gonna win the game. Um, so that's why this line is winning. But you have to, you have to memorize this, otherwise you, you can lose. Or just get a completely drawn position. Um, now let's go back. So this was the queen e7 line, so pinning the pawn. Now let's look at the knight e4 line. Uh, here you play bishop d5. The point is you're attacking the knight and also preventing d5 to, to defend the knight. Um, now here they have a tricky move. They can play knight takes f2. Here, obviously, this is a fork, so you have to take. Now you, you walk into a discovery, so they're gonna take. And now you have to play king g3. You can also play king f1, but king g3 is the best. So you play king g3, they take again, you play bishop takes. So you're up a piece, but they have pawns and 
obviously your your king is weak um now let's look at how to how to save this position you're you're winning but you still have to know some moves in order to to keep the king safe um they're most likely gonna castle and now we play h3 the point is you just give the king some squares they're most likely gonna play d6 over 84 percent they play d6 now you play bishop takes knight so you just remove this knight and now you play queen c2 the point is uh, if they ever play this move it's not gonna come with tempo and also if they take this pawn you can take the bishop um so now basically they cannot route the bishop back because they can also not push because you're gonna take um and now let's say something like rook uh, rook to b8 and just putting pressure on your bishop you play knight b to d2 they play something like bishop e6 you just hide the king back and there you're gonna play uh, rook f rook h uh, f1 you're gonna place this knight in the center and obviously you drop a piece they do have the pawns but these pawns are weak because uh, all of the lines are open so you're just you can also just target the pawns um, so yeah this is the this is the tricky line um, now let's go back and they can also play f5 here just to defend the knight now you're gonna play c takes d4 they're most likely gonna give a check over 95 percent of players do uh, you block with the bishop uh, they're most likely gonna take with the knight you take back uh, and now they play something like d6 you play queen b3 because the problem in black's position in this case is that they cannot castle because of this battery um, and now they can play bishop takes you cannot take with the knight because you lose this one so you have to go king takes and now they take uh, de looks like your position is gonna fall apart but you can just ignore all of that and just play uh, rook a to e1 hide the king on b1 and just attack the the king in the center because they cannot castle if they play e4 looks like the the, the center is gonna close but you can just sack obviously because the king is in the center they take you take let's say they block already doubling up the rooks the knight is lost um so this covers the 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 the, the this one <laughs> the 94 move uh now let's look at the the main line which is d5 counterattacking your bishop you do not want to take you want to go bishop pins the knight they're gonna go knight e4 so they're gonna jump in the middle uh, and now you you take the pawn uh, the main line is bishop b6 but check is also fine um, I guess let's first look at the the check uh, you block with the bishop and now there is there are a lot of variations obviously uh, they can take with with either piece uh, but the most yeah actually both moves are kind of played the same let's look at knight takes knight takes you obviously play knight b to d2 developing another piece and recapturing uh, they're most likely gonna play castles now you castle they're gonna go bishop g4 pin um, now you play h3 attacking the bishop the bishop can take they can go back there is also this move but now you take this one because you do not want to take with the queen so they damage your pawn structure and obviously you cannot take with the knight because you lose the queen so you take this way this way um they're probably gonna move back and now we go g3 and the idea is to move the king up and just attack down the h file um so let's let's look at i guess uh, if what happens if they move the bishop back now we go 
queen a4, so pressuring the knight, pressuring the bishop. Most likely the bishop is gonna take, you take back with the knight. Uh, now they play knight e7, so uh, moving the knight back out of the attack. <laughs> this rhymes. Um, now you're gonna play f4 and again you're just gonna attack on the queen side. Something like c6, you drop the bishop back to, to d3 to put the pressure on this pawn. And again, your ideas are gonna be something like rook lift. You can also go insane with g4 if you want. Um, and obviously just transfer all of your pieces on the king side. Um, so now let's go back and let's look at what happens if bishop takes, for example. So now we're in the, let me just rewind. Uh, we're in this line, so knight d4 takes and check. You block with the bishop uh, and we looked at knight takes. But now let's look at bishop takes. Um, you take back with the knight, obviously. Now they have two moves, let's say castle and knight takes, two most popular moves. Um, let's say castles. Now uh, you can just castle. They play something like bishop g4. Here you can take this knight. This is always an idea. Now again, these are not only moves, but I'm just giving you ideas that you can that you can play. Um, so you can take the the knight. Now you can play this move queen c2. The point is you're just getting out of the pin, pressuring this pawn. Um, now let's say they take. You obviously take back with the knight. Let's say rook b8. You play b3 and your idea is just to pressure this pawn because the structure is weak um, and most likely you're gonna end up winning. Um, now let's go back. What if they take the knight? Um, let's say they take. Uh, you can throw in this move as well. Bishop takes again. Uh, they take. You take with the queen castles castles let's say bishop g4 and now we, there is another idea knight e1 looks totally strange it's the best computer move the point is you're gonna transfer the knight to c5 and just play again play against the structure um, you can also target the structure doesn't matter but the idea is you do not want to simplify into a completely uh, not equal endgame because you still can target these weaknesses, but like uh, a, a heavy piece endgame because these are the heavy pieces. So you, you want to keep uh, the knight on the board so you can claim that you have a good knight against a bad bishop, I guess. Because the knight is going to live forever on c5 because it's a dark square and the bishop cannot target it. Um, so yeah, this is the, the check line. Now let's look at the main line. So this is the, the main line of the main line. Uh, bishop b6. Here you play knight to c3, developing the knight. Uh, I guess putting pressure on this one. Also uh, putting pressure on the center, on the d5 pawn. Um, they're most likely gonna castle in this position. Now we play bishop e3. The point is you're reinforcing the center because they're gonna play bishop g4. So pinning your knight. Now the center can be kind of weak, but you played bishop e3 to support it. Now you play h3. They're gonna go back most likely. They can also take, but obviously this is not good. If they take, here you have to remember g takes. The point is you're gonna attack on the g file. Also, if you take, you just hang the pawn. So that's why this is not good. Um, so if they take, you take with the G pawn. Uh, they're most likely gonna take your knight. You take with the pawn and the idea is to attack. And I would prefer white in this position. Uh, also the engine, the engine likes it. Um, so that's why they go back. They probably won't take. So bishop h5, now we play this move 
queen c2 getting out of the pin again if they take you take with the g pawn again this idea so they will play bishop g6 attacking your queen and i'll just slide again to the to the uh, b3 so you have to remember this idea you attack the bishop bishop goes back and now this idea queen c2 bishop again uh, there is a threat of the a discovered attack so you again slide uh, so you slide to to b3 now here um, most likely black there are a lot of moves uh, but most likely black is gonna play 97 over 60 percent of players do so and the point is they do not want you to damage their pawn structure they want to play uh, c6 to solidify the center uh, you just castle they play c6 you play bishop d3 the point is you're again preparing for an attack now here they have a move knight d2 and the point is they are attacking your queen attacking the rook and when you take the knight they take your bishop so they basically force you to give away your light square bishop and this is completely fine because you're gonna go rook e1 they're most likely gonna move the bishop back so let's say bishop g6 is the is the most popular move now you're gonna play something like knight e4 attack putting pressure on the bishop they play knight d5 you you don't care about giving away this bishop because i mean it's a a pawn like a in a in a role of a pawn anyways supporting the center uh so you just play knight f3 let's say they take you take back with the rook and something like uh, rook e8 you double the rooks and this is the position so after 20 moves of theory <laughs> this is the position you have two knights against two bishops obviously you can already remove one bishop you can take if they take with uh, with the pawn the the pawns are gonna be doubled this is not a problem because you can just play a3 so no pressure on the on the a file um and yeah this is kind of equal i mean the engine says it's equal but obviously both both sides have uh, winning chances because there is so many pieces on the board um and obviously your idea is just to attack again <laughs> this is the the whole point of this line so i don't know you're gonna move the knight away you're gonna push the f pawn you're gonna you're gonna strike in the center with e6 just to open up the position because obviously when you take this pawn is gonna be weak obviously they can also take with the queen but then you can just trade queens play something like a3 uh, transfer the rook to b3 to target the pawn they can play uh, they can play b4 but then they give up the dark squares you have a knight they have a light squared bishop again this idea of transferring the knight to the dark squares so there are some of the uh, of the ideas that you can uh, use in this position um, so yeah this is the complete main line um obviously there are a lot of moves that i didn't cover like i don't know for example what if they take in this position you just have to think logically you cannot take with the pawn because you drop the bishop so you take with the queen um and let's say i don't know something like bishop takes queen takes and then the most popular move is queen d7 and you already have the ideas of knight h4 and f4 uh, this is always an idea to move the knight away or knight h2 and f4 and then to place the knight on g4 so the idea is always to be aggressive and attack on the on the king side um, and yeah that's about it i think we covered all of the lines let's do a quick summary so in this position d4 they take you play e5 the best move is d5 after which you do not take the knight but you pin the the c knight 
Uh, they jump into the center, now you take, they have two moves. Uh, if bishop check, you play bishop block. If they go back, you play knight c3. Um, now castles, bishop e3, supporting the center. Um, also there is f5, I didn't cover this line. f5, uh, you take on passant. Um, and now they have to take with the knight, because the point is you're also pressuring the center. They can also take and take, there are a ton of lines, so I could <laughs> I could talk about the theory for three hours. Um, so this is also in a position that you can get, obviously you just castle. Now they are the one that are attacking you, so you're gonna have to play some defense, but this is obviously totally fine. Uh, the position is equal, or I don't even know what's the engine evaluation. Yes, maybe slightly better for white, but uh, kind of equal. Um, so let's say position like this. They move the rook, I don't know, you chase the bishop away and so on. Um, but the, the, the main main line is bishop g4. You play uh, h3, first you chase the bishop away, if they take, g takes, you take down the g-file. Uh, most likely they go back, you unpin, they go here, this is the, the queen dance. Um, they go knight d7, idea c6, you play uh, castles, they go c6, you go here, they can do this move, uh, you just take the knight, they take the bishop, you move the rook. Bishop goes back, attack. Uh, you attack the, the black bishop. Knight f6, you don't care about giving away your bishop. Something like this, and double the rooks. This is the main line. Uh, now let's go back. Let's also remember the, the other moves, which are knight e4. You play this move, attacking the knight. This is the tricky line, knight takes, you have to remember king g3, uh, takes takes, castles h3 to give your king some luft, um, d6, queen c2, important move, pressuring the bishop, uh, actually no, I messed up, you first take, you remove the knight, then you go queen c2. Um, so this is this line. And then you have ideas of pressuring the center, you can also attack. Um, now let's also look at the f5 move, if they do not know for, for uh, the this, this line. Um, here you play cd, bishop before check, you play bishop block, almost always you play bishop block when they, when they check you. Um, knight takes, bish, uh, knight takes, knight takes. Uh, something like d6, you you play queen b3, yeah, this is the, the move, queen b3, the point is in this line, they cannot castle. And now remember, uh, if, if they take, you take with the king, because uh, otherwise this pawn would drop, so take, take, take. So you take with the king, de, you do not care, because you have this move, you're gonna attack the king. If they play this move, you can sacrifice. Um, so this is the this is the uh, immediate knight d4 line. That's why they have to go d5 first, and then knight d4. Uh, so they they anchor the knight because in this case you prevent d5. Um, there is also queen e7, the the trickiest line. You castle, you unpin the pawn, they go knight g4, which is totally not scary, because you can just go, uh, no, you play bishop g5, yeah, attacking the queen, they play f6, you take, they take, you take, you have all sorts of threats, obviously this is losing. Um, now this move, you take the knight, they take, you pin, they kind of unpin, queen e2, putting pressure on the knight, 
Uh, now they have d5 or f5, d5, you play cd because you want to misplace the bishop. So there is going to be a fork down the line. Uh, bishop takes, now you, you uh, remove the defense of the knight, so you undermine the knight. Uh, obviously take, take, take. Uh, if queen takes, now we play bishop e3. Queen takes the bishop, you take the queen, they have to take your queen back, and you take the bishop, the knight is pinned, you're gonna pick it up with f3. Um, there is also f5, the more complicated one, but there are five games in the database, so not many players are gonna play f5. Also, this move looks better because it also attacks the bishop, but we have to look at f5 as well. Uh, f5, again, cd, uh, bishop takes, then they go, uh, then you have to go knight d2, so just attacking the, the knight, the point is, I don't know, just random move, uh, take, 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 you again win. Uh, so this is the threat, they go d5, now you play knight f3, attacking the, the queen and the, the bishop. Uh, there are a lot of complications obviously in this line, but the, the, pro the problem in black position is this king and you have the pin. So even if you have to sacrifice a piece, remember bishop g5 you're gonna get the other rook in. So the line that we looked at is, was bishop takes, queen takes, let's say queen moves, um, you go... Yeah, you go knight g5, the point is they cannot take because you're, uh, they're pinned. If they take your bishop, you take, they take, you take, and this is gonna be winning. Bishop g5, double up the rooks. Um, so yeah, this is the, the trickiest line. Queen e7. And the last move was knight g4. Knight g4, um, here you play cd. So just take in the center. They're gonna play bishop check. You're gonna block with the knight. Uh, now the reason you block with the knight here is because there is no knight on e4. Um, so in all of the previous cases, for example, in the main line, actually this is not the main line because the main line is bishop back, but in this case, if you block with the bishop, I mean with knight c3, the point is knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, fork. I cannot draw arrows. Because um, they have this knight here. In the knight g4 line, you can block with knight c3 because there is no knight on e4, so they cannot take twice. Um, d5, do not take en passant, play this move. Uh, castles, castles, a6, you take the knight. And remember, h3, remove the knight from the board and damage the, the pawn structure. Uh, something like rook c1, pressuring this pawn, queen d2, and so on. Um, and yeah, with that, we cover all of the lines in e5. Um, this doesn't completely cover bishop c5 move because we also have to look at d6 in this position, which we're gonna do in the following videos. Um, but yeah, knight f6 is now, is now covered. We looked at all of the lines, so c takes and e5. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you next time.